Hi there, welcome to this 15 minute session on the design process and in this session I'm going to be presenting a model of the design process that I think is critical to the successful delivery of a digital design solution. Uh, I'm using some of my own examples and I'm also going to be giving hints and tips for students as well. But first, this is my model and we're going to be looking at that in a minute but what we should do is maybe discuss what the design process actually is. And the design process is a series of steps that we use as designers to take our ideas through to completion. And it's got steps of refinement, it's got steps of design, which help us create the best possible product for our end users. In fact, you should always be thinking about the user interactions during the design process. And this is called user-centered design. And the design process is used everywhere and it all designs. Everything around you has gone through a design process from the room you're sat in, to the chair you're sat on, to the computer maybe you're sat in front. All of them have gone through a design process. So it's used everywhere and different companies have different design processes. Um, there's not just one design process that you can go through. Being a student, you've probably gone through a design process before. You've probably gone through something like research, production and evaluation, um, which is a very rigid version of the design process. In actual fact, the design process is more like this. Although there are different variations on it, we can all agree on some of the key steps. We define, we come up with ideas, we design, we prototype, and then we evaluate our product. And if necessary, we go through the process again. And constantly, we're researching. Research is not something that you might be led to believe that happens at the start of a project. It actually continues throughout all the steps. Um, it's a constant thing because we should always be researching and looking for ways to improve our product. So that's my model. Let's start off by looking at defining the problem. And here are some of the classic questions that you can use when defining the problem. When a client comes to you with a brief or when a lecturer gives you an assignment, you should be thinking about um, what actually is the problem that's being asked here. What's the project time frame? How much can I do in that sort of project time frame? What about the audience? What will they expect? Values and brands of the clients. How do I tell the story about my of my client? Um, what's the budget? You know, what can realistically be done for the client in that sort of budget? And what are the results? Because without results, how can we properly evaluate whether our product's been a success or not? An example I'm going to use throughout this presentation is a website that I created called Screen Bites. And Screen Bites is the Dorset Food and Film Festival. And they came to me um, wanting to attract a younger target audience for their website, um, for their festival as well. Because their current website looked a bit dated, and not only that, it's a festival that's based in village halls and churches uh, late at night and it's about local food producers. you have all the food producers around that you can go and test and then you go and watch a film about food and film and they just found their demographic was much older than they wanted they wanted to start creating a new generation of people coming to this festival and expand it so that was the problem but the actual problem isn't just that. The problem is also in that question, how do I keep the older demographic and the younger demographic? And how do I tell the story of the festival? How do I show that it's about Dorset, it's about food, and it's about film? So questions like that are just some of the questions that you've got to ask um, when creating a product. And there's more questions as well. The next step is to research. Um, research is quite a long step, actually. The more you research, the better the project will be. Uh, you should be looking at primary and secondary research, obviously. Things like questionnaires, online and offline. You should be doing focus groups. I like doing focus groups. I went out to this festival and I spoke to all the audience members there, you know, people walking around testing the foods, asking them what they thought was good about the website, what was bad about it. I spoke to the food producers, you know, how did they interact with the website? And I got some feedback on that sort of information. And I also studied existing examples. I looked at existing example websites for festivals to get an idea about what they use, um, what sort of is useful for their users in festivals. I also looked at things like the National Trust to try and get an atmosphere of nature because it's about Dorset, this website. So things like that really helped. And I also looked at not just existing examples of websites, I looked at existing examples of food packaging as well, like organic food packaging, because I kind of wanted to represent this idea of organic local produce. So those were some of the things I looked at. And if you're making a game, you should be looking at platformer games if you're making a platformer game. You know, which ones are good, which ones are bad. You should also be reading books. Not enough digital designers read books and keep books around them, really. You know, it's always straight to a forum for some answers or, or onto a website for some information about what works and what doesn't. 
books are great because books not only have really academic literature in them, but they're also a good way of getting you away from the computer. You don't want to just be sat in front of a computer all the time when you're designing. You want to be inspired. You want to think about things outside of just the screen in front of you. Uh, things like the Android app development book is a great way of starting an app, say if you're doing something like a navigation app. There's some starting points there about navigation, and you could um, use that to start building your um, app off that. So you could come up with some ideas, do a small demo of it, and then build off that. The web designer's idea book I find really interesting read. It comes up with ideas about how to approach navigation for different target audiences and websites and what's worked and what hasn't worked. And magazines as well. Magazines are really important because they're cutting edge. They can tell you what's coming up in the next year, you know, what technologies have been more popular, what perhaps, you know, the popularity of a technology might define which way you should go with it um, and what you should design. So magazines are really important to keep up to date with as well. Um, after magazines, after magazines, after research, we need to um, ideate, which is just coming up with ideas. Now this is also, not only is it one of the most creative steps, it's also one of the most stressful steps because until you've come up with your idea, you can't actually come up with the product for your client. So it's, you know, it's quite stressful. You're not going to get paid until you come up with your idea. But at the same time, ideation should be the most playful phase of your um, design. You should be really thinking about all the problem. You should be imagining the possibilities of what your product could do for the client or for yourself. Uh, you should be brainstorming with other people if, you've got, if you're working in a group. You could be using mood boards. I use a folder full of imagery um, that I collect, you know, not necessarily just about websites, just imagery I think would suit the project and put them all into a folder and make it all large and just look through them. And I sketch and scribble all the time and I write words down that I think, oh, actually that's a key word that I want them to use to tell this client's story. Uh, think eight hours and work for two. That's a great quote because it gives you an idea of how much time you should actually spend thinking. This is, this is the time where you should be putting the most of the effort into coming up with ideas and not just the first idea but more than one idea. Too many students I see come up with one idea within the lesson or the lecture and then by the end of it that's what they're going to go ahead with. Come up with three, four ideas. Apple come up with ten ideas. They only select three which they refine and then they walk away with just one idea that they're actually going to make. So they throw away 90% of all of their ideas. So you really want to be playful when you're working in this um, step. Your designer is keep flicking onto Facebook or checking your email. It takes time to get into the zone where you're actually, your mind's actually playing with the idea. And the other thing is don't design with too many designers. If you have too many designers, a great idea can be watered down because everyone has to agree with it and someone might not agree with that idea. And that's called designing by committee. So try and keep your design group small. After that, we then go into the design and prototype phase. Design is thinking made visual. Saul Bass, a uh, great designer. Um, when designing and prototyping, we want to be using sketches, wireframes, visual comps. We want to be thinking about the presentation and the content of the information. We want to be thinking about how the user's going to interact with our products. We need to be testing that as well, you know, on people. Um, we need to be testing models and concepts when perhaps when you're making a game you don't just want to go ahead and make the, all the graphics beautiful and everything beautiful and then have a game that doesn't work you want to be using little sort of skeleton games which is just like a block and a level and things just to get it going um, you need to be iterating as needed and iteration is constant evol evolution of your designs um, I like to use Photoshop for that you know if I'm doing sort of quick comps and in fact here is um, here is how I designed some elements of that website I was talking about. So I originally came up with a site map which I agreed with the client so I had an idea of what was actually going to be in it and I came up with some sketches and ideas for the website and then I just started putting some imagery into uh, Photoshop just to give me an idea of how it would work maybe and I then further developed that idea so I started bringing in navigation but I didn't feel the idea was working the way I wanted to so I went away and sketched a little bit more and I also did some experiments in the navigation so I came up with an idea for this butterfly to sort of like jump across the buttons and maybe I might use that in my design and eventually I came up with uh, this design here which 
um, was going to be projected so it's going to look like it's being projected onto this canvas screen and the world was going to turn that Dorset world was going to turn around you go past villages and then information would pop up and the client okayed that they thought it was a good idea they wanted to go ahead with it but I actually and this is the thing as a designer you should be informing your client and they should go with you know hopefully go with what you feel you should be there coordinating them um, and I found that this wasn't a great idea in fact actually a couple of days later I thought it had missed the target audience and it wouldn't appeal to not only the older target audience but the younger target audience for me it ended up looking like something the boy scouts um, would make do you know what I mean it's a bit sort of like a bivouac sort of you've got two poles and some canvas in the middle and stuff I found it was wrong and I, I found it lacked the soul and that's what you should be trying to get you know soul into your project so I went away and listened to um, some classical music by Vaughan Williams and Vaughan Williams is a famous English composer who captures the landscape uh, and in his music, you know, really gives a sort of feeling of the, you know, green and pleasant lands. And I listened to him and went out in my car, listening to him actually, and taking photographs of the landscape just to try and get the atmosphere back into the website. And it might seem a bit of an odd thing to do, you know, you're making a website where you listen to classical music. But other designers do it all the time, even in video games. Um, for example, I don't know if any of you have played Left 4 Dead, but the lead designer, Chet, actually read um, the history of the Spanish influenza to try and get that feeling into the game that he was making. And I think if you look at the sort of like graphics on it, you can get this idea of this society that's being broken down and the, the, the feeling of this claustrophobic disease-ridden land that's taking over this place. And he used that in it, and you know, it's a highly successful game, and it does have this sort of atmosphere. So you should be looking at ways of getting atmosphere into your products. So eventually, after doing that, I kind of used some of the old ideas and the new ideas, and I came up with um, this website. And this website did really well. You know, it got, it got, they really loved it. It got a few awards as well. And I feel it sort of like does get the atmosphere of Dorset uh, across. As well as the idea of sort of food, you know, it's kind of got some picnic baskets in the side there you can't quite see, but it's got this sort of like natural landscape um, with it on paper, you know, it's being projected on paper like those organic foods. And it also sort of has the idea of this sort of um, village hall. So, you know, at night time when it all goes dark, we go into this village hall and we um, all sit around and watch the uh, film. And from here you can actually select the program. So that was the website. I created and we delivered it we tested it you know we put it out to a few people to test and um, it all seemed to work fine and so we, we put it up on the web but evaluation which is the final step never really ends you know you should be constantly evaluating sections and bits and pieces of your project in fact little bits of your project will go through this design cycle in themselves but you should constantly be evaluating your project um, so even since that's been up Every year I evaluate what's working, what isn't working for it with the client and ways it can be improved. You know, I'm looking at ways of improving accessibility and usability. You should be gathering data, speaking to users and looking for ways to modify and enhance your product. You know, if you look at say something like the App Store, the rating system on the App Store is a great way of the developers to get feedback and comment on it. You can get feedback straight away and say what works, what doesn't work. Even companies like Microsoft have things like the error report and things like that so you can contact them immediately and how many big companies have you had that have had updates come out because of something that they want to improve upon so big companies are doing this all the time and you know over the three years I've improved upon different elements of it and in fact the reason I'm showing that example though so in fact a lot of the older members um, are using the uh, um, iPads which kind of surprised me but we found that out by chatting to some of them who are coming to the um, festival so we need to make an iPad friendly one so what we're doing is we've defined that as the problem and now I'm back in the research stage. I'm deciding how I'm going to approach that. You know, we, They want to keep the, the look and the feel of the website, but at the same time, is it possible in HTML5? Is it right to do it in HTML5? Do we wait just a little bit longer and do a um, Facebook version of the site so um, people can access Facebook if they haven't got that? Or do we go ahead and do it this year now? So this constant cycle of the design process is happening again and again and again and it will continue throughout your product life don't just think just because your products finished and, and you've delivered it the design process really is finished it continues forever and ever and that is the design process now underneath this video 
uh, you should see a couple links. There's a link to a, a, a lecture by John Cleese, and it's a great lecture, and it's about um, ideation. It's about how John Cleese, you know, world-class comedian, you know, genius, how difficulties he has coming up with ideas and how he approaches the ideation phase and how he has to lock himself away in his room and how he enters that play phase of coming up with ideas and how you shouldn't accept your first idea. So that's a brilliant, brilliant lecture. And I've seen designers watch it, um, talk about it, as well as comedians and other people. It really does cover everything you could cover in that. And it's good to see that some of the stresses that get put on yourself actually exist in people like that as well. You know, the, how hard it is to sort of like lock yourself away from life, the stress of not having an idea when you've got a deadline. So it's worth seeing that. And on top of that as well, there's also another link underneath, which is a short video about how Google redesigned their design process. That's all about sort of, because Google weren't making very good apps at one point, so they decided, right, we're going to look at our design process and completely redesign it using a company they've got in New York actually a design company and they designed it for the whole company and now they're back with good apps so um, it must have worked so there's two links there for you and I hope that's been informative thank you very much and I'm more than happy to hear about you know what design process you use and if you want to leave comments underneath about design process and what you think works and what you think doesn't work perhaps you know ways of uh, entering something like the ideation phase cool research ideas if you want to share that sort of thing underneath as well any information about ways to develop the the design process i'd be more than happy to hear thank you very much